This is Lagos, Nigeria's former capital city and today the country's economic and commercial nerve center. Although she had the smallest geographical size in the country, Lagos has always attracted a huge population influx daily from within and outside Nigeria by people in search of success and economic prosperity. She is the most popular state in Nigeria and this has continually exerted huge pressure on public infrastructure such as roads and drainages, public transportation and traffic control, social services, security and environmental management within the context of severely limited resources. The ugly strains of crime, congestion, traffic gridlock and robbery, mountains of rubbish, environmental filth, bad roads, collapsed health and educational facilities, societal breakdown and decadence increasingly worsened with time even as the population continued to grow exponentially. Lagos needed a thinker, a visionary and a modernizer at the helm of affairs. Bola Ahmed Tinubu came along. From a poor background, he struggled to read, traveled to the United States in search of the Golden Fleece. As proof of his brilliance from early in life, he made the honors list of Richard Daly College. He subsequently transferred to the Chicago State University, Illinois, graduating with honors in 1979 and earning a bachelor's degree in business administration, accounting, and management. Ashwaju is a friend of my youth a brother and a jolly good fellow. Bola and I were fortunate to have attended the same Chicago State University, CSU. But I was a year ahead of him. Bola studied accounting and nobody to state is how much of an exceptional accounting student he was so much so that he was a tutor and an academic mentor to his classmates and other students. Bola is a genius. It was not surprising that eventually graduated with honors and distinction with the prestigious Kum Lade. That was inevitable. Upon graduation with honors and several awards, Bola Tinubu cut his professional teeth at the American-based Arthur Anderson Deloitte Haskins and Sales, now called Deloitte Haskins and Touche, and GTE Service Corporation, the largest communication and utility company in the United States of America. Meanwhile, at Deloitte Haskins and Sales, the young and professional Bola broadened his experience by participating in the auditing and management consultancy services of General Motors, First National Bank of Chicago, Procter & Gamble, International Harvester, GEC, and other Fortune 500 firms. On his return to Nigeria with his international experience in finance management, young Bola joined Mobile Producing Nigeria as a senior auditor before he retired as the company's treasurer. Bola Tinumbu um, came to us late 1983 in Mobulo in Nigeria PSC to attend an interview for the position of an auditor in our audit department. He did the interview, he did it excellently well, and we had no choice than to offer him the job. He came in and uh, his performances were great, were excellent. So he is one individual, very proactive and very hardworking. He, he, he thinks ahead of his time. We appreciated him, we love him. And then we told him in 1992, when he came to us, that he wanted to go into politics. We were surprised. So what are you going to do in politics? You are doing very well here. And in fact, you have been tipped as one of the people to be considered for the post of the finance director when he, you know, when he, Retires. He said, no, sir. He was adamant and said he had to go. Then we then said to him, for the excellent job you have done here, if you had to go and you lose, please come back to your job. He left. The remaining is history, which we all know today. Ashiwaju Bolatinubu opted fully for public service in exchange for his lucrative job at Mobile. 
His first foray into active politics was as a founding member of the defunct Social Democratic Party, SDP, on the platform of which he was elected in 1992 as a distinguished senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to represent Lagos West Senatorial District. He recorded the highest votes in the country in the Third Republic. He was chairman of the Senate Committee on Banking, Finance, Currency and Appropriation in that dispensation. He was at the forefront of the late Chief MKO Abiola's campaign for presidency in 1993 on the platform of the defunct Social Democratic Party SDP. When the June 12, 1993 election described as the freest and fairest in the country's history was annulled, Tinubu emerged as one of the fiercest opponents of the annulment. As the arrowhead of the struggle to actualize Abiola's mandate, the military junta reached out to him several times to jump ship and come over to their side. He refused to betray his principled commitment to the sanctity of a free and fair election. Exasperated by Tinubu's intransigence, the military viciously went after him along with other opponents of the annulment. He was charged with treason, detained, his house was firebombed. He eventually had to flee the country for his dear life. His wife, now Senator Oluremi Tinubu, and her children had to be smuggled out into exile. While in exile, he remained steadfast in his commitment to the pro-democracy struggle, making great personal and financial sacrifices towards this effort. Bola Ahmed Tinubu has remained true and loyal to MKO Abiola even till date, ensuring that his memory never fades. Hafsat Abiola, one of MKO's daughters, in a statement, acknowledged Bola Tinubu as the only one who still remembers MKO's family members and supports them. I call all of you here today to help me in expressing the immense gratitude that I have for Governor Ahmed Bola Tinubu. I'm from, I'm from Yoruba land and the Yoruba people in expressing gratitude kneel down to greet those that perform their dream. So in that tradition, I'm going to kneel down to greet Governor Ahmed Help me, because as we know, not everybody remembers Moshud Ashimawu or Laole Abiola, not everybody remembers Kudirat Abiola. Governor Tinubu does not forget them, does not forget the price they pay. Help me in thanking him, Ed Joe. In the year 1998, Ashuaju Tinubu returned to Nigeria to heed a call for all Nigerians to join in the process of national reconciliation and development. A year later, he began his two-term public service as an elected governor of Lagos State on the platform of the Alliance for Democracy, AD. Under Tinumbu's eight years as governor, Lagos came alive. Lagos had finally found a person with a vision and mission heading the government, a person who came prepared for the office. How can we so easily forget that one person who believed in the potentials and capabilities of this country? One patriotic Nigerian was the architect, the source of all the credible achievements that abound across the length and breadth of the Lagos of today. As elected governor, Tinubu took Lagos from jungle to mega city. He came prepared to serve. He came with a plan and blueprint to succeed. Tinubu inspired a 25-year development plan of Lagos and helped lay the foundation for the infrastructural renewal, revenue breakthrough, and related reforms in Lagos. When Ashiwajubola Ahmed Tinubu became governor of Lagos State, one of his first priorities was security due to the high rate of crime in the state at the time. To achieve this, he renamed the then Operation Sweep, which was a joint patrol team that had the Army, Navy, Air Force and the police and called it the Rapid Response Squad, RRS. He repositioned the team through training and provision of modern security equipment and communication gadgets. This boosted the morale of officers and the men of RRS, which translated to a 